through Code You Australia's Instagram and Facebook, we get a lot of questions asking about medical internships for international medical graduates. I'm Dr. Caroline. I'm one of the co-founders from Code You Australia, where we help doctors revive, survive and thrive in their medical careers. So let's talk internships for international medical graduates. I actually completed an internship in Australia, so I feel like I am the best person to advise you on this topic and give you my own personal experience. I've collated all the questions that have come through our DMs inquiring about medical internships in Australia, so let's go through them. Okay, one. So the first thing that's important to know is that in Australia, we do internships a little bit different to most countries overseas. In Australia, medical students go on to graduate without having done their intern year yet. Instead, they graduate as fully qualified doctors and then they work as a doctor during their internship. So to summarize, it happens after they graduate. And yes, it is a paid internship because technically they are fully qualified doctors. We call this the PGY-1. PGY-1 is not a familiar term amongst IMGs because it's not used in a lot of countries overseas or it's used when you're doing a specialty training program. So it's a bit different here. PGY-1 stands for postgraduate years and it refers to the number of years you've been working as a qualified doctor since graduation. So for our interns in Australia, they graduated and that's their first year of working as a qualified on to the second year and then they're referred to PGY2 which is just another type of junior doctor. So an intern is still junior doctor but it's just a subcategory of junior doctors. Do I need an internship in Australia? Okay so first thing to ask yourself is have I done an internship? Now don't get confused with graduating and not graduating because a lot of universities overseas their internship is the last year of medical school which you get a certificate for completing that and you graduate and become a doctor so if you have done your last year of medical school as an intern and that was your title then you don't need an internship that is technically counted as your PGY1 experience so what instead you should be looking for is a PGY2 So postgraduate year two, junior doctor role. Who will need an internship in Australia are the IMGs who never completed their intern year during their medical degree and also never actually completed it after they graduated. So I'll give you an example. Let's say your specific degree in your home country does not include your internship year within the degree. Instead, you graduate just like our Australian doctors and then the first year after graduation is your internship year. Now, if that's your particular medical school, And let's say you never, ever completed that first year after graduation. Instead, you left for Australia or your circumstances changed and then you left for Australia. Then you will need to do some sort of internship. Now, there is another category of IMGs who will require an internship. Let's say, for example, you did actually complete your internship back overseas. However, You went ahead, you applied for PGY2, 3 or 4 junior doctor roles. The hospital offered you one. You started your ARPA registration paperwork. They submitted the paperwork and then within a few months, you hear back from ARPA saying, no, sorry, we don't recognize your internship. In that case, the hospital cannot offer you a PGY2, 3 or 4 plus role because in the eyes of APRA, you have not done an internship that is satis- to their satisfaction. I bet you didn't think of that one. It has happened to a few people, I do know. Um, it is absolutely devastating because obviously they finally get their foot in the door. They're this close to working as a doctor in Australia. They're all excited because they get awarded a job they're hit with this horrible bombshell that they cannot proceed with their registration because that job is not suitable for them. It happens. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And in that case, that person will need an internship position to which they could try to find one in Australia, or which is very difficult, 
or they can go back overseas and try to complete one. Question number four, who is given priority? So number one priority, of course, goes to the Australian local medical graduate. Then it goes to the international medical student who graduated from an Australian medical school. And then it goes to the international medical graduate. So yes, you are last on the list, which adds to the difficulty in obtaining successfully an internship. Number five, what are the requirements to apply for an internship in Australia for an IMG? It is exactly the same like any other job you're going to apply for. You need a minimum of AMC1 pass and a valid past English test. Now I'm gonna give you a hot tip. As somebody who has actually conducted interviews, who has worked in the admin office for junior doctors and have worked alongside the director of clinical training who does all the hiring for junior doctors, I'm telling you, make sure you have a valid English test, even if it's not written as a requirement. The reason being is, as I mentioned, IMGs are not the priority for internships. So if a position becomes available and they've exhausted all their other options, that is, there's no local graduates who want the position, there is no international student who graduated in local Australian universities that want the position and now they are only having IMGs as an option, they're going to choose the person who already has all the requirements that APRA will will need, that is being a valid English test. And just think about it logically. If they were to hire you for the intern position and you haven't gotten a valid English test, you submit your paperwork to APRA and you tell the hospital, yep, I will go ahead and book my English test as soon as possible and I will um, pass that and then APRA will have everything. But let's say the person doesn't pass the English test and instead the hospital finds out months in while thinking that this doctor could potentially have started in a few months' time, they're not going to wait for you to resit that test. So instead, the hospital's going to give it to the person that is ready to go to submit all their paperwork to APRA. So this is a Code You Australia hot tip by me, who's actually worked in the admin side of things for almost a year and a half now. I am telling you, make sure you have that English test. Question six, where do I apply? So each state has its own website to apply for any medical job, including internship. Co-founder Sasha did a wonderful post on this with all the links. So head over to Koju Stray's Instagram and click on that post and you'll be taken directly to those states' websites. Okay, so the thing to know about this though is that not every state will be open to IMGs through their campaign. So the campaign, if you're not already familiar with what that is, we've talked about it a lot on our other podcasts. It's basically when a state will advertise for jobs for doctors this year to start next year. So if they want interns for 2024 start date January, they're going to start the campaign to recruit them in 2003 and each state has a different month that they do it in. Now, some of those states aren't open to IMGs, but you are allowed to have an internship. Now, this is another hot tip. Queensland Health their campaign allows IMGs to apply for internships. So apply through that campaign. Now, can say, for example, another state who doesn't allow IMGs to apply through their campaign for an internship. Let's say it's New South Wales. Does New South Wales let an, inter- an IMG have an internship? Yes, they do, even if they weren't eligible to apply through their campaign. As long as you've applied somewhere in the country through someone's state's campaign. So if you've applied through the Queensland campaign, you're fine. You can technically take New South Wales internship if 
they've exhausted all their options. So the local grads, there's no one to give it to and there's no one to give it to amongst the medical students who graduated in local medical schools in Australia. So you're allowed to have it. So the tip is, summary, what's the tip? The tip is apply through the Queensland Health Campaign website. Question seven, why have you heard internships are difficult for IMGs to get? Fantastic question. So this is what you need to factor in. Unlike a junior medical officer job or in other states they're called resident medical officer jobs, unlike those PGY2 and above, there aren't many PGY1 internship positions available. So I'm going to give you a really rough calculation just so you can theoretically understand what I'm trying to say. Let's say the local medical school has 30 medical students that are about to graduate this year so they can be interns for next year. The hospital that has trained these local medical students only has 30 positions to provide these students which means if 30 local graduates and 30 medical intern positions and they are the priority, remember, then they are going to get all 30 positions. So are there any left for international medical graduates? No. Is there a chance that an international medical graduate can get one of those positions? Yes, but what's the catch? So what you're relying on is actually one of those 30 doctors to decide that they actually don't want to do their internship at that hospital they trained in. But instead, for example, they might want to move over to Queensland. And if they got a position in a Queensland hospital, an internship over there, they're going to take that. And so this one position now becomes available. But remember, Who is second in line? The second priority goes to international students who graduated in Australian medical schools. So if they are applying the same time an international medical graduate is applying, then they have to get the job. It's a legal requirement. It's not a preference. Okay, so is there still a chance for an IMG to get one of those positions? Yes two scenarios there wasn't any international student who graduated from a Australian medical school applying and instead there was an IMG and essentially the hospital exhausted all its options but there are no local graduates or international students who graduated from Australian medical schools left to give it to so then they are allowed to give it to an IMG another scenario Let's say out of the 30 local graduates, one of them or two of them decide, you know what, next year I want to take a gap year and I want to travel before I start work as a doctor. Then two positions come available. But once again, remember your priority list. So international students who graduated from medical schools in Australia, they get that first and then you. So you see, with just the right amount of internships available to local medical students who are about to graduate, there isn't much room left to give positions to international medical graduates. You're really relying on one of these doctors to pull out and positions become available for you to step in and take it. So do a lot of international medical graduates get these positions? No, they don't, but a few of us have. And when it comes to internships, sometimes it's like right time, right place. It does involve a bit of luck. So when it comes to this issue around internships, I like to be really honest with international medical graduates and do tell them that it is extremely difficult to obtain a internship in Australia. So what I would advise is if you're in a position to either go back home and complete an internship where you're from, or stay in the country that you're in and complete one more year as an intern, then try to get a job in Australia as a PGY2, that would be the best option. Question eight, is the difficulty to get an internship Australia the same like other jobs? No, there are plenty 
PGY2 plus junior doctor jobs available. Especially when you look more regional than you do metro. Question nine, when do internships start? So internships start at the beginning of the year around January. Question 10, are there any requirements for internships in Australia? Yes. So an internship is 47 weeks of practice full time, which means you'll technically get five weeks annually. So in this 47 weeks of practice, you have to do a 10 weeks of minimum surgery, 10 weeks minimum medicine, eight weeks minimum emergency medicine. And the rest of the weeks can be made up of whatever. So do subspecialties count as surgical time? Yes. So if you did 13 weeks in the orthopedic unit, it does count as fulfilling 10 weeks minimum of surgery. Question 11. Do those 47 weeks of practice count as the 47 weeks of supervised practice required by APRA to apply for general registration? Yes, it does. So the 47 weeks of working as an intern does count as your 47 weeks of supervised practice so that when you're ready to apply for your general registration, you can. Now, this has to always be accompanied by one form of clinical exam, whether you already did your AMC2 or you're going to do it while you're working or you've applied for the WBA program. But either way, with that, plus a past clinical exam, you can apply for general registration. Question 12. What do all interns need to pass their internship year? So what does it mean to pass your internship year? It means you pass those 47 weeks of practice. So let me further explain this. When you go to a term on the medical ward, each hospital is different. Some hospitals have five terms in a year. Some hospitals have four terms in a year. One of those terms might be 10 weeks. One of those terms might be 13 weeks, depending if that's a hospital that does four or five terms a year. The thing is, did you pass that term? So let's take the example of the hospital that runs a 10-week term. You went to the general medicine ward for 10 weeks. That's one whole term. Did you pass that term? As a junior doctor, you're required to submit an intern or in-training assessment form, ITA. For interns, it can be called an intern training assessment form ITA it is exactly the same form it is created by the AMC the Australian Medical Council and all hospitals across Australia issue it for junior doctors to be assessed while training to deem whether they passed or not passed that particular term for interns you must submit a midterm assessment form so it's the same form that same intern assessment training form but you submit it halfway through your term so that's at the five week mark if you're doing a 10 week rotation and then you submit it again at the end so it's really the end one that if you don't pass it then technically you did not pass the term What does it take to pass? Now, there is a certain structure to this assessment form and my biggest tip to you is that anyone who's starting work should look through this form and understand it very well. Because for example, if you get a two in one area, it means you failed. And if you get a three, it's borderline, but it is a pass. So you need to know the ins and outs of this form so you understand what you're submitting and what you're collecting back. A lot of IMGs have run into trouble with this form, which does affect their path to general registration. Sasha and I do an entire podcast on this form and on the 47 weeks of supervised practice. So instead of repeating it here, I'm going to put a link uh, in this podcast so you can go and view that video and understand the ins and outs of that form because it's extremely important. But essentially, if you pass that form, so you get a three and above and you're deemed as up to standard in that term and so when you pass that term you've and it was 10 weeks you've passed 10 weeks of that 47 weeks of supervised practice so that can count if you didn't pass it 
even though you already did 10 weeks, those 10 weeks don't count anymore as 47 weeks of supervised practice. So the 47 weeks have to be weeks that you passed when you were being supervised practicing as a doctor. Now, important to note, all these requirements by the AMC are currently under review and they're looking at changing the format of the Australian internship, not just for international medical graduates, but in its entirety for all doctors, whether local or IMGs, completing an internship. So just be aware that there may be changes coming soon. Question 13, do interns have different rules to other junior doctors? Honestly, no. All junior doctors are under some form of supervised training, especially if you're an IMG. You're always under supervised practice. So all junior doctors seem to operate the same. There really isn't much difference in the role, whether you're a PGY1 or a PGY2. You perform the exact same things and you operate in the exact same way. And I personally believe that all junior doctors should have a lot of safety netting and a lot of their own processes and know when to escalate to a senior, even if they feel capable of handling something. Know your hospital protocols and know what is required of junior doctors and if it's something that should be escalated because simply it's deemed that way then you should do it now i hope you found this useful if you have any more questions about the australian medical internship feel free to contact us if you haven't already subscribed to our youtube channel please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more of these podcasts and if you're not already following us on facebook and instagram please look up Code Your Australia and click the follow button.